What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content in the app business. And welcome to the App Masters Virtual Summit. And for this virtual summit, I really wanted to highlight some of the indie developers that are in my network to kind of say, hey, look, this works. People in the indie space can make a living off of apps. We're going to break down how this man has been able to do it. He's grown his app business tremendously using Apple search ads, and we're going to learn all about how he's been able to do that. So without further ado, let me introduce my friend, Huxley Seidman. He is the CEO and founder of Kite Metrics. You got to check him out if you're using Apple search ads and you wanted to figure out what's the ROI per keyword. Well, Huxley built it for himself, and now he's providing it for you as well. So it is kitemetrics.com. Huxley, welcome to the summit. Thank you very much, Steve. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. And I'm glad to share some of what I've learned managing Apple search ads over the last two to three years and, and how I built Kite Metrics and some of the, the features and product that I think can help a lot of your listeners. All right, Huxley. Well, let's break it down with Apple search ads. Tell me, how do you discover new keywords when you're about to bid on them? Yes. Yeah, so I use, I, I, I rely heavily on Apple search ads auto uh, feature. So it's commonly called a discovery campaign. What you do is you set up a discovery campaign um, and you put search ads on for that ad group. And then you can add a lot of keywords there that you already have, but give them broad match. Mm -hmm. And then when you go into the search terms on that campaign, it'll show you all the new keywords that Apple has decided are relevant or are similar to the existing keywords and, and similar to your, your metadata. And in there, I will pick out the relevant search terms, and then I will add them as exact match to, to um, ad group campaigns that are relevant to that um, category or to that new term. And so I found that managing this process was pretty tedious with the interface in Apple Search Ads. You had to do three or four different button presses and switch between different screens. And so I automated that with Kite Metrics. So. Wow. You create your discovery campaign. You tell Kite Metrics, here it is. This is my discovery ad group. And um, it'll surface all those keywords for you, those new keywords. And then you just hit a plus button, and that will automatically add it to an uh, ad group that you want. Or you hit an X button, and that will discard that keyword. And by discarding it, it adds it as a negative a negative search match. Or wow. negative. That's really cool. So Kite has been, Metrics has grown from when we first talked. I mean, it was maybe a couple of years ago, but you, it, I thought it was just like an SDK that would help you figure out the ROI. But now you've turned it into like an Apple search ads sort of like management platform. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's oh. gone from just being an SDK with some with a table, like an Excel spreadsheet. That first version of it was pretty much just like down. It's just like an Excel spreadsheet on your computer on a web interface. And, and now it's a full management interface. That's really cool, dude. I got to use it too myself because I've been wanting to dig in deep into Apple search ads and really help clients out that way too. All right. So now you have the discovery campaign. So you're putting a few broad keywords that you already have. So for your app might be like deep sleep, white noise, all these different things and letting Apple figure out what other keywords it should bid on. How do you determine the budget of that campaign? Can I can I just show you that discovery? Let's do it. On the, yeah. yeah, let's do the share screen. Okay, so what you do is you can in Kite Metrics you can go to the discovery tab, and you have your discovery campaign set up in Apple Search Ads. It shows all your campaigns here. So select discovery, and this tells Kite Metrics which one you want to use. And this one I just called auto, but this one has search ads search match on, and it has my broad match keywords already pre-populated. And then the next step is to say, where do I want the keywords, the new keywords that I discover? What campaign do I want to add them to? So you select that. And then you can set a CPA goal initially. Um, this is just because you have a brand new keyword. Um, and you just tell discovery, this is the, the goal I kind of want when I first start off before we, we go and get any more additional data. All right. So in the left hand column, these are all the search terms that Apple Search Ads has discovered for you. And instead of having to manually copy, paste, and switch between screens, you can just hit the plus button. You say, this mostly search term is relevant to my campaign and it's generating a lot of sales. Hit the plus button, select the ad group you want to add it to, and it gives you a suggested CPT based on the average number of taps and conversions and the conversion rate. And this is based on that CPA goal you set in that screen earlier. You hit save, 
and it will add that keyword to the to that ad group and then it will also add it as a negative keyword to your discovery campaign so you're not bidding on it twice and if you find the keyword you don't like just hit the x button here and it will discard it and it will add it as a negative keyword very cool hey huxley let me ask you this so do you need to ha Assuming that you've already set up a campaign that has a discovery going on, this is you going into the Apple search ads to figure out, okay, from this campaign, now tell me which key new keywords that Apple found for me. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and there's some other little stuff you can do. Like um, if you have some new broad match keywords you want to add in here, you can just hit add keywords and, and this will add them as broad match terms. Got it. Um, or you can manually add your negative keywords. And this will, what you add here is reflected in Apple search ads um, right away. And if you want to reset, you can start all over again. Um, this is currently, it's it's set up to do one discovery campaign at a time. So for pretty much one storefront, if you have multiple storefronts, um, if, if that's the use case, then in the future, we'll have multiple discovery campaigns running and I'll be able to automate that as well for you. That's awesome, man. And lastly, actually, I gotta ask this, any secrets to helping grow subscriptions for a subscription-based app that you've tried? Any secrets or tests that you've tried in the past? Um, I've tried a bunch of advertising methods with with driving people from Facebook to Apple search ads to YouTube, and generating just getting people into your app is is the easy, is the is the biggest part of the song with Apple search ads and just getting more people to see my app and then get and giving them as much value as possible up front um, has been has been really helpful. And then after they've seen that the app is useful for them. Than converting them into a paying user. Um, it's, I guess that's a little generic, but but that's what's been working for me. How long do you wait to hit them with the offer? Like, how long do you give them to see that there's value in the app? Um, I hit them right away as soon as they, as soon as they download the app, they're presented with the offer, so that they have the expectation that hey, there's a free portion and there's a paid portion, so that they know straight up front, and, and you set the expectations right away. And then after that, um, it's just always there. Um, there's the option wherever the content is locked, there's the option to upgrade to the subscription. And then I give a lot of stuff up free. I might be giving away too much up free, too much stuff away free. But um, there's a lot of stuff for free that they can really experience the app. And hopefully, I mean, because sometimes I get people that sign up right away. A lot of times I get people that use the app for for three to four months. And then after four months, they'll become a paying user because they're just, they've just been using it every day for four months. They say, you might as well start paying for it. All right, guys, that was just a snippet from our previous virtual summit. And if you want to check out Huxley's product, go to kitemetrics.com. I've got that linked up in the description. So go check it out and I'll see you on the next video. Check out the top video if you want to see the playlist of all our previous virtual summits. And then click the bottom video because YouTube recommended this video to you, specifically to you. Peace out.